So again, with this example, we want to start off asking, is there a variable isolated? In this case, the answer is no. So we're going to come over here to this step and try to make a decision. You're going to choose the variable easiest to isolate in one of the equations. What do you think will be the easiest? The bottom one? Yeah, if you notice the tip here, it says look for variables with a coefficient of plus or minus one. This y looks like it'll be easy to get by itself, doesn't it? So let's rewrite this equation, y plus five equals two x. And what do we need to do to get it by itself? We're going to subtract the 5 from both sides. And we get y equals 2x minus 5. Now I can take this 2x minus 5 and I can plug it in to the first equation for the y. We're going to go back now and solve for the, the variable that's there. The directions say to solve for the leftover variable. What that means is once I've subbed this in for the y, all that's in this equation that's left is the x, and we're going to end up solving for it. <clears throat> we're going to start off by distributing that negative 4. Then we're going to combine like terms, negative 3x and negative 8x is negative 11x plus 20 equals negative 2. Subtract 20 from both sides. With an 11 there, what are we hoping happens? We want something divisible by 11, and we get negative 22. And x equals negative 22 divided by negative 11 is positive 2. We're going to go back up to those original equations and pick the easiest one to plug it into. y plus 5 equals 2x looks like the easiest to me. I end up with y equals negative 1. We're going to rewrite the original equations in the step 4 checkbox.
Both sides do check out. Barely can get that writing in that box. 